When I was asked to speak today, my first impulse was to come up here and to defend myself and to explain why I'm still a true blue Carolina person when I represent Christian Leitner, Grant Hill, and Shane Battier. But I thought against doing that. I thought about telling you some stories from this summer's free agency period when we represented Ray Allen as he left Boston to go to Miami and the negotiations with Pat Riley. And in spite of what you may think from those Dos Equis commercials, Pat Riley is truly the most interesting man in the world. I thought about telling you about John Henson's draft process this year and how he was selected 14th by the Milwaukee Bucks and what it's like sitting there as the agent in the green room, sweating with a family and a client looking at you and saying, where is he going to be drafted? Where is he going to go? And if you look back on YouTube and look at John's draft process, you'll see a sweaty bald head, and that's me nervously waiting <laughs> to find out myself. Lastly, I thought about talking about the power of sports, the power of sports to corrupt and to bring out some of the worst impulses in people. And it's really something that I deal with daily, trying to compete ethically in an ethically challenged profession. But at the end of the day, I ruled all of those out, and instead I thought I would speak to you about my newest client, Jeremy Lin, and the power of an opportunity. Now, for those of you who don't follow the NBA, Jeremy Lin is the nicest guy you'll ever meet. He's an Asian-American point guard from Harvard, who after going undrafted in the 2010 NBA draft, signed a minimum contract with his hometown Golden State Warriors. He wasn't expected to have much of an NBA career. In his rookie season, he was sent down to the developmental league three times and eventually was waived prior to the start of his second season. He was claimed by the Houston Rockets, only to be waived again two weeks later on Christmas Eve, no less. Jeremy was then signed by the New York Knicks as their fourth string point guard in late 2011, the Knicks being his third team in less than a year. Jeremy's future was so uncertain that instead of renting an apartment, he slept on his brother's infamous couch in, in Manhattan. After a slew of injuries depleted the Knicks, Jeremy was put in as really a desperation move of last resort. He responded by leading the struggling Knicks to a 9-3 record over their next 12 games, averaging over 22 points a game and 8 assists, including an unlikely 38-point outburst against Kobe Bryant and the LA Lakers. The stretch of 26 games where Jeremy led the Knicks turnaround was deemed linsanity. The New York Times called him the most popular player in a decade. Time Magazine named him one of the 100 most influential people in the world. <laughs> and he has donned the covers of Sports Illustrated, ESPN, Time Magazine, and GQ. On June 15th, Jeremy selected me to be his agent to handle his free agency process and his marketing and off-the-court endeavors. It made for a very crazy summer for me and my colleague Graham Boone, Moorhead class of 2009, who's my indispensable right-hand man, and he's here today with us as well. The media scrutiny and attention on Jeremy and us as his representatives was unlike anything that I've ever seen in the 15 years that I've been representing professional athletes. You couldn't turn on ESPN without seeing Jeremy's face or some leaked, totally inaccurate story about our negotiations. It was truly insane, but less than one year after being waived by the Golden State Warriors, Graham and I negotiated and Jeremy signed a $25 million three-year contract for him to be the face of the Houston Rockets. As I reflect on Linsanity and this summer's negotiations, the thing that most fascinates me about Jeremy's unlikely story is the power of opportunity and how a single opportunity can change a life. The bottom line is that Linsanity does not happen without coach Mike D'Antoni, the former coach of the Knicks. When coach D'Antoni looked down at the end of his injury depleted bench and saw Jeremy, I'm sure he didn't see the savior of the Knicks season. I'm sure he didn't see someone capable of scoring 20 points a game on a consistent basis, and I'm sure he didn't see someone who would capture the hearts and minds of fans across the globe. He saw a temporary solution, but the point is that he gave Jeremy an opportunity where others hadn't and believed in him enough to continue giving him those opportunities. Similarly, the Moorhead Kane Scholarship changes lives and gives opportunity. For me, it was the opportunity of a lifetime. Now, since my wife and kids aren't here with me today, and hopefully none of you will share this with them, I can truthfully say that the happiest day of my life was not when I walked down the aisle <laughs> and was not watching my children being born. It was not when I signed my first client, and it was not when I made partner at my law firm. Those were great days in my life, don't get me wrong. But the happiest day of my life was when I was a 17-year-old kid 
standing at my family mailbox in High Point, North Carolina, and opening the letter, and back then we didn't have email and websites to notify us, but opening that letter that told me that I had received the Moorhead Scholarship. It meant that I was on my way, that doors were opening, and that I could see my dreams and my opportunities unfolding before me. Now that 17-year-old has been replaced by an older, wiser, and a little bit heavier 44-year-old. A 44-year-old who looks back over the years and sees all the Coach Dan Tonys who gave me my shot and my opportunity. My first legal internship was given to me by Chuck Patrizia, a Moorhead alum. Dean Smith was kind enough to sit down with me in 2004 and to let me make my case for representing Carolina athletes. Marvin Williams gave me my first opportunity to represent a high-profile draft pick when he was selected number two by the Atlanta Hawks in the 2005 draft after, after helping win Carolina win its fifth national championship. The fundamental lesson that I've taken away from my experiences with Jeremy and my experience as a Moorhead is that people need opportunity. They need someone to believe in them and to help them achieve their goals. They need someone to mentor them in order for them to reach their potential. My point is, each of us has the power to be Coach D'Antoni in our daily lives with the young people that we encounter. I vividly remember being about 20 years old and trying to plan for my last Moorhead summer. And back then, I believe it was called the Study Abroad Summer, and the scholar had to set up the internship for him or herself. I remember reaching out to people I'd read about and admired. I sent a lot of letters and called a lot of executives and a lot of companies. And I remember the frustration of getting form letters back that had absolutely nothing to do with my request. I remember not even getting the courtesy of a response from many, if not most, of the people that I reached out to. It made me angry. It made me vow that if I ever got to the point that a young person was reaching out to me or looking up to me, that I would take the time to take their call, that I would take the time to sit down with them, and I would take the time to try to help them. Again, that angry 20-year-old naive person has been replaced by a 44-year-old, a 44-year-old who now understands how busy and stressful a workday can be, how tough it can be to juggle the demands of getting clients, holding on to clients, losing clients, and raising kids, and how sometimes you just don't feel like being bothered. Again, as a 44-year-old, I now understand why those people didn't get back to me, but I don't for one minute excuse it. I'm proud to say that I've honored the vow that I made as that 20-year-old. It's tough, and candidly, I don't always feel like meeting with yet another kid who wants to be a sports agent. <laughs> but I do it. I do it because it's tremendously gratifying and rewarding to help young people along their journey. I do it to take a break from the stresses of my life in order to focus on someone else's life. I do it because someone did it for me, and I encourage each of you to make yourselves available to help others, particularly young people, to give advice, opportunity, internships, to give your time, and to think of Coach Dan Tony and what he did for Jeremy Lynn and how you can do the same for someone else. Thank you.